What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. We are brought to you by our good friends over at Played Again Sports, 1450 Clemens Spurs Road in Deptford, New Jersey, and Fresh Roast Coffee as well. So here we go. It's never easy as we welcome in our good friend, Jonathan Marshall, at John underscore Marshall 3, and of course, sports reporter anchor at WMUR in New Hampshire. I'm up there in Boston with the Celtics, who get to pretty much um, coast, if you will, take a little break, a little lull. Here we go. Um, looking pretty good. Obviously, yeah. White's playing outstanding for the Boston Celtics. We'll get to them in a moment. But last night, my New York Knicks, <laughs> uh, in a game that I think I was blowing up your phone, I was not comfortable with going in. We know the game is all about runs. Second half, the adjustments, the fourth quarter, Brunson. And then just when you think the game is pretty much over, the friggin' New York Knicks, Lose a game that, as a diehard Knicks fan, no shock, no surprise. Reminds me of Charles Smith getting rejected a thousand times. Patrick Ewing missing the bunny layup and not dunking. Reggie, Reggie, rather, Reggie Miller. The list goes on and on. And I will tell you this, my friend. I am beyond salty, as you know why. <laughs> because that was a game, okay, that's a game where you pretty much, it, it, it's done. That mm -hmm. game is over with. And if Hart makes a free throw, if Robinson doesn't have the boneheaded play, if Brunson with the turnover as well, even in overtime, we're not even talking about any of that. If you just close the deal and they just let the Sixers hang around, hang around, overtime 112-106, it's now a Knicks 3-2 to two lead over the Sixers. Game 6 in Philly, Thursday night, 9 p.m. How are you, my friend? What's up, Q? <laughs> Um, man, where, where do we take this? So I was at a Bruins game, playoff game last night. So I was covering that game, but also streaming on my phone. And at a certain point, just like you and everybody else, I'm like, this game's over. Like I'm over this, I'm over this team. Tobias Harris is gone. Let's just, let's just figure out how we get this team on the right track to actually being serious championship contenders. Cause they're not it right now. Next thing I know, Maxie's going crazy, hitting a half-court shot. Mitchell Robinson, boneheaded foul. All this is happening, and I'm still amazed that the Sixers are on the other side of a total flop job. They folded. This is a fold job. There is no excuse that the Knicks should not be moving on to the next round. No excuse. Obviously, Therese Maxie did what he had to do. But once again, can we talk about this when it comes to the playoffs? There's something to be said about having that experience that mental focus. Animal. Lakers, this is why the Lakers were handled like how they were handled against the Nuggets because they have that championship execution and focus. And it's funny because these are two franchises. Yes, they're storied franchises. We know about the history, but in recent years, they haven't been proven to be championship teams, championship mm -hmm. franchises mentally, physically, in all aspects. And this series has proven that. There's many times we can point out where the Sixers and Knicks have seemed like, what are you doing? So it's fitting that Last night went the way it did, and this series is going the way that it did. I hope it goes seven because it deserves a seven-game series. Both fan bases deserve to go through a seven-game series of this intense and nervousness. No, I don't want to deal with that shit. I don't want to go to a game seven. I want to end it Thursday night. They're up 96-90 after McBride makes that little um, soft jumper. There's 26 seconds left. Sixers call timeout, and again, for some inexplicable reason, and and – I know Maxi traveled, but the Knicks got a boatload of calls as well. It's the NBA, man. You can Euro step to Spain. They don't give a crap. Yeah. He makes the three, and then boom, Robinson fouls him. I mean, it's shades of Miller with, you know, eight seconds to go, like years ago. I'm like, what are you freaking doing? And then again, to make matters worse, why, when you turn around after Batoon had the foul, Hart makes one of two. He makes mm. two. He makes two. That mm. game's over. Yeah. He makes two. It's a 97, 94, 98, 94 game. Right. It's a four, it's a four point game. It's a two possession game, unless you're going to foul Max again. And then for some inexplicable reason with 8.1 seconds. And I saw it looked like Thibodeau was signaling for the timeout. Yeah. Two timeouts to burn. Why not foul him or call timeout and regroup and reset. And it was a so hell of a shot. Maxie had a monster night. Uh, you know, we'll get into him beat and Harris and the role players. Maxie is just a star. He had a ridiculous night, but you knew the ball was going in his hands. You knew that the shot was there for Maxi. So body him up, call timeout, or foul him. 
Yeah. So I'm looking at the play by play just yep. for showing Max. He makes that three pointer and Mitchell Robinson fouls him. They were up. If if he just made the three pointer, the Knicks would still have a three point lead. Correct. Right? And so at that point, I just don't understand NBA players defensively. They always they're all they're you always, they're always falling for the pump fake or they're always doing stupid things like Mitchell Robinson did last night. I don't keep your hands up. What don't you leave do? your feet. Holy, there's no excuse. Like why are you panicking and trying to contest the three point shot knowing? These things have happened and will happen. Larry so I, Johnson, nineteen ninety nine. I don't. So I don't understand. But what, once, once again, once again, can we talk about this in the heat of the moment when the pressure's on? Some guys just mentally, they they black out, and that's what happened by Mitchell Robinson. There's no excuse. Keep your hands up. You're seven foot anyway. Whatever. Put your hands up if he makes it. Whatever. You still have a three point lead. You get the ball. You're going to get fouled. There's no reason to all out contest. On a three-point shot, no reason. I mean, I it, it was a brutal loss, man. And then you go into overtime, and even when they have the lead in overtime, and this is where I went batty, and mm-hmm. my friends do it just to get under my skin. Rule of thumb, man, leave me to F alone in crunch <laughs> time, right? Don't send me to friggin' under four minutes to go in overtime. Congratulations, good series. Like the reverse yeah. friggin' mush. And by the way, that friend <laughs> is dead to me. He's yeah. like Fredo and Godfather too. He broke my heart. <laughs> Um, I'll deal with him later on. Um, But yeah, I just, I didn't like the fact that even all game long, the Knicks settling for a substantial amount of jump shots. I think I text you when Embiid went for that breather. I said, this is the time where you have to keep attacking the 10. And that's when they had to lead up to five, which you think almost felt like 10 points. They could not close the deal. And that's what's so frustrating and perplexing. You look at that overtime, they're up. 102.97. 102.97. And then again, Maxi brings them back with another three ball, right? Now the Knicks are up by two. They couldn't make any of their shots back and forth, back and forth. And Bede goes to the line, makes two of two. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's a 102.101. And then they leave um, uh, uh, um, Kelly O open, right, for that little dunk underneath. They're up by one. And then after you had a horrible. Um, uh, possession. Brunson turns it over. Um, mm-hmm. Maxi misses the uh, the layup. Batum gets the rebound, and then Embiid, who's done nothing all night long. I mean, it was a smoke and mirrors triple double because he also had, I think, nine or ten turnovers. Has the uh, jump shot, and then boom, they get to the line. It's insurmountable. And then you have that horrible turnover again by Brunson. And as great as Brunson is, and he's a great player, you mm-hmm. cannot, under any circumstances, as a guard, understanding the court uh, uh, acumen, right? Your, your, your court vision, get caught up in the air like that and throw the ball away. Last year, he did the same thing. He did the same thing. Like, what are you doing? Either drive to the basket. You're not supposed to dish there, take over the game, like be selfish in that regard. And it was just, I I think the series is over. I'm saying it right now. I I do. I think the Knicks are going to lose the series in seven. I do. I've seen this. I've, I've seen this too many times. Yeah. They're, they're going to t- and I don't want to hear this stuff about, you know, comparing them. And I tweeted this out. Do not compare them to the 90s teams that are playoff tested, that were in wars with Indiana, Chicago, Miami. You know, they're up 3 1 in Miami and you have the free for all and then they lose that series. I mean, you know, that 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 was one of their turning points in their franchise. So uh, I, I know this team all too well, and I love the heart and the guts and the gumption of this team. And I love the role players and no Randall and, you know, Robinson was banged up and he came back. Okay, fine. But don't compare different yeah. eras and different teams. That there was a different game of basketball. This team does not have a track record yeah. of getting punched in the gut and getting off the mat. So that's, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sorry. And, and I'm going to get hammered for this. Um, but I, I, I think I text you. I text my buddy. He says the freaking series is over. It's over. It's done. Seven Sixers. Here you go. <laughs> the same rate. The same way you feel about the Knicks is the same way I feel about the Sixers. They will not fool me. Yes, Tobias Harris. He's he horrible, down, right? Like you, he's, so he's getting credit for playing above average because usually you're average, right? Like if one thing we can count on is Tobias Harris giving you 15 points, right? We can count on that. But you, you made a couple shots late. You're getting credit. But this team will not fool me, Q. Like, when you think they've turned the corner, they will break your heart. They will break your heart. Yes, game six in Philly. 
but they're gonna find a way to flop and break your heart. We, you know it, Q. You know it. I, I don't believe. I, I don't listen. Do I believe? And maybe I'm over panicking. I get it. It's still raw because it it was just a brutal friggin' loss. Am I to believe that Embiid all of a sudden is not going to be gassed and he's going to turn back the clock and he's going to have fifty? I mean, I, I guess I can hedge it by saying this: the Sixers needed. What did Maxi finish with last night? Forty. Yeah, forty six. Forty six. He had nineteen. They needed 46 from Maxi, and they yeah. clung on for dear life to win yeah. the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The and, game and, was lost. The game was lost. Yeah. I I don't know, man. I, I'm not going to sit here and say Embiid's going to go out and have 35 and 18. I Let's let's go to Embiid for a second. Um, yeah. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I, I Do you not want the – do you not want the ball? Yeah. You know, we know he's hurt. We know he's banged up. A lot of players are, but no one was making that excuse when he pumped in 50. I mean, let's let's you can't have it both ways, folks. And I know I'm going back and forth with people like this. And I love people who are like trade them, trade them, trade them when they're about to lose. We talked about this a couple of seasons ago, even though he won an MVP, like you want to try to get some value for him. I don't think Joel Embiid is a winning player. And I think he gets frustrated. I think he's careless with the basketball. He doesn't get back on defense. He's probably gassed. I think he's a dirty ass player as well, man. He's reaching green status, right? With the nonsense. Um, But with all that being said, there are flickers and moments where he's still a player that won an NBA MVP. And it's almost as though the Sixers fan and the faithful, they're trying to will that player to come back out. He wants no parts of the basketball Mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. He wants no part of the basketball in crunch time. And to me, if you're a face of the franchise, an MVP, you want to be an all-time great, a Hall of Famer, you want to win rings and championships and be beloved in a city that will love you if you win, you got to demand the frigging basketball. Now, I get it. You want to defer to the hot hand and maxi, so be it. But there are times in the game where you need to get your ass on the low block and you have to want the ball. And I don't see it from this guy at all. I don't think he has heart. I don't think he's a tough player. I don't think he's mentally tough. I think he's mentally soft and he's not mentally tough at all. And he just doesn't have that ticker. Maxi was like, F you, I'm going to will this team to a win. I'll take the shots from the frigging parking lot at Madison Square Garden. Whereas Embiid just wilts. How do you explain that? Yeah, it got to a point where I said every action from here on out for the Sixers half court needs to go through Maxi. Right, because you can trust a all those fails, he's gonna attack, he's gonna at least shoot it. He's not gonna just carelessly throw the ball. That those turnovers, he almost had 10 turnovers, Q. No excuse, because, but it comes from being mentally exhausted, mentally checked out, not being ready for that moment. Your body hurts, okay, but you're out there. If you're not you can't play then sit down. That's that's come on, that's, man. Bill Russell, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, Walt <laughs> Fraser. Um, uh, Bradley, uh, Bird, Isaiah, Magic, Johnson, Kareem, those guys were banged up, yeah, but they wanted the ball in the clutch. This yeah. guy, my friend, encapsulated it perfectly. He said, Maxi is an alpha and a leader, and Bead was in give up mode and shrinks just like past history, especially last year's game seven. He is dead on accurate. There was, there was low energy throughout he like we were texting i was texting my brother i was texting a couple other friends like the energy level from the get-go was the reason why they were facing that situation late in games his energy effort his energy level was low and if that's your top player your team is going to feed off of that energy. Correct. So if in B's your top player you feed off of whatever energy that player is giving you like minnesota who's their best player anthony edwards that energy trick you trickles down yeah i got let me cut energy. you off for a second brother yeah. i got news for you yeah. And Bede's not the top dog on that team. Nah, it's it has to be cool. Maxi, right? It has to be. It 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 and it it has to be Maxi. It yeah. the the film doesn't lie. Yeah. It speaks for itself that he is the dominant leader, the vocal lead. Give me the basketball. You take a back seat. If you can get me 25 and 13 and make a couple blocks here and there, and that's where you sit there and you take a step back and you're like, wait, are we going to do this again? If they get bounced in the first round, they get bounced in the second round. You're going to maybe want to trade him. I know we can talk about the semantics and the logistics of trading him, but are you building around him? Are you blowing it up? I get it's a conversation for another day, but you can't be that big, that good, that skilled and not want the basketball. 
I, I think the MB conversation is is interesting because he's a great player. We know this MVP and all this, but at a certain point, you got to realize this is the experience of Joel MB. You got to you signed up for it. He's going to be hurt or out of shape. There's no other way around it. He'll be 31 by the time next season starts, right? So what is this potential that we're still clinging on by building a team around Joel Embiid? I think we have all the proof we need. But what? Just, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I said, maybe we're just too old school with this. I mean, it's like the whole everyone the, talking about Durant and Durant's legacy. Give me a break with that crap and Durant's legacy. He'll flip flop. He'll jump to another team. I mean, you know, LeBron not really giving into his plans and the report. <laughs> Look, man, these these guys, no doubt, all time greats, man. They're going to Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, write it in. And, you know, Embiid, for the most part, you look at his career, you would sure. you would say Hall of Famer, correct? For sure, no okay. doubt. But put all that to the side. Yeah. You're playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. You're comparing yourselves to the Moses Malones, the Dr. J's, the Allen Iversons, the Charles Barkley's, the Andrew Tonys, you know, the, you know, the dogs. They want, you know, the... You know, yeah. Andrew Tony, you know, the, the Boston Strangler, Maurice Cheeks, you know, Dr. J against the Lake, Moses Malone, you know, give me the Iverson wanted it, Barkley won. You 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 you've got to, there's gotta be a moment where uh what was it, the Tin Man or the Scarecrow? One of them didn't have any friggin' heart. One of you know, you gotta yeah. turn around and that light has to go on where you're like, I am not going to be, I'm going down, but I'm going down my way. Yeah. Like if he's got to take 35 shots yeah thursday night yeah. then you take 35 shots thursday night and at the end of the day you basically live with the outcome hey it's still my team i'm the leader we're a great group of guys but they put it on me and i let them down i got fireworks in the background i don't know how to hell that <laughs> you're on fire right now i mean what, that was something I, was <laughs> I mean what are we celebrating you're on here? fire right now <laughs> I was confused. I don't know what Wait, happened there, man? I'm happening? like, it's like patriotic. I'm coming up. That came out of absolutely nowhere. So we'll have to rock that, and I'll have to put that on. That's so hilarious. Point being, yes, I'm erupting. Right, it's a celebration <laughs> because it's epiphany. It just hit me. If you're in bead, you have to want to basketball. You have, you have to. You have to. And um, we have, like you said, for the last couple of years, we've had this conversation about Joel and Bead. Yeah. The way the game is now, anyway, I don't know if you can win the championship with the the Embiid type as your best player. Yeah. Joker is a big man, but he's a point center. I mean, honestly, the way the, the way the offense revolves around him, there there's energy and movement with the ball. When Embiid has it, what do we see? Guys are just standing around. That's not the game now. There has to be energy on offense. When Maxi has the ball, there's a certain level of energy that he plays with, the excitement. You feel yeah. that. With Embiid, yes, he's dominant, but where's the energy from the other players? We yes. don't see so you don't like them tomorrow night, and I do. That's funny. This team lost to the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. I saw Ben Simmons give up a layup over Trey Young. Give me Bunny. I've, I saw what Joel Embiid did last year against the Celtics when they needed a win. Yep. I've seen the Kawhi Leonard shot in Toronto. I have a history. I have. I was in South Beach during that shot, by the way, laughing my yeah. ass off when it went. Yeah, I, yeah, it hurt. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I saw Jimmy Butler yell out Tobias Harris over me. I've seen these things, like these things, and Tobias Harris is still on this team. That's how I know they're unserious. Yeah. And so until they prove me right, this is just the first round, by the way. I still don't think they would get past. Crazy. They, they still have to get past the second round. The question isn't can they get out of the first round. They haven't ever got out of the second round. Q. Yeah. What I've learned yeah. the most out of this series and what I've seen from the Eastern Conference so far, the Celtics, if they don't make the finals, they should disband that roster. Well, I'm going to go one further. I'm going to go one further. If they don't win the championship. I mean, when you're getting that production from White like they are and you still got Tatum and Brown, I know Porzingis is banged up. I get it. But they're kind they of don't need them. They, they don't need them next round. No. Trust I mean, me. listen, they're, they, 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 the Heat, East, they got their win. The That's it. I can't take the East series right now. I, if Giannis and Dame, the calf injuries, that's something that you that can go wrong at any given moment, right? The Pacers are young. They let Patrick Beverly and, and those guys cook them last night. The Magic are young. The Cavs, yeah, if Donovan Mitchell goes off for a couple games, they're wishy-washy. It's Boston. The Knicks, the Knicks only have Jalen Brunson. Yeah. And the Sixers and Embiid's body hurt. So 
Yeah, the East really to me, it's the Celtics. You, you know what I find even in these playoff games, man, especially just focusing on the Knicks and the Sixers and you know, watching, you know, the Bucks and the, these teams, man, they set off so many outside jump shots, man. It's ridiculous. Like sometimes you don't need the three, you know, yeah. and sometimes you're getting a clean look, and sometimes you're trying to force feed on, you know. You're going down. It's a uh, one on three, and what does he do? He steps back from three and he chucks it up. I mean, you know, Defensenzo's. He's had his moments. You know, the, the Knicks have some energy players, and I think you got to win the battle on the boards. I, this is a game where Brunson's got to figure out a way to take over as well. They got to do the dirty work. I, I love their grit and their hustle, but sometimes I question their shot selection, yeah. and I think that's because again. You know, OG has been fantastic. I love the energy, man. I, I love the energy that some of the kids are mm -hmm. giving them because I'll take Hartstein and say uh, Robinson maybe getting in foul trouble if I know that I'm going to see some energy uh, mm -hmm. from some of these guys. I mean, you you look right now, you know, McBride gave them uh, energy. Um, Achua gave them yeah. some ridiculous energy. I think Shaq mentioned, hey, the kid, if a kid's got 51 points in a series, that speaks volumes. That's energy. He gave him 14, or McBride gave him um, um, 14 the other night. Achua didn't get in. But point being, uh, again, you know, you look at the series, he yeah. has given them energy. He's given them, a, you know, tough rebounds, points, dirty work. We're seeing that from this Knicks team, uh, the depth, right? And then you look at the Sixers. I mean, my goodness, you get 15 to 18 from Harris, you get your 25, 30 clean from Embiid and no turnovers, and you get 35 from Maxi. that's too much yeah. for the Knicks. Yeah. You know, is. and that that that's where I'm at. And I'm wondering, again, are Knicks fans gonna invade Wells Fargo Center tomorrow night? Who knows? I don't like well, by the way, a nine o'clock start. What are we doing that's here? Insane. I'll be in that's... Philly calling the fights for Team Combat League. We got a nine yeah. o'clock tip off. What what, that's what wild. I mean? That's that's a West Coast time start. <laughs> like as far as the East Coast starts over here on the East Coast, that's insane. That's, um, so Magic Johnson, all time great. Magic Johnson rarely comes out and says anything that you would deem negative, right? Towards the Lakers franchise, right? Um, <laughs> he basically came out and said, "Look, load management hurt us," and then the one that kind of caught my attention was we're just not mentally and physically as tough as the Denver Nuggets. Now, I think we kind of all knew that, but when you hear it from Magic Johnson, yeah. who's got such equity and stake with the Lakers franchise and the NBA yeah. and the fan base, that speaks volumes. And I'm wondering, I don't know if he even has a relationship with LeBron James, but it's a good thing they got that title a couple of years ago in the bubble, man, because – it's just been an unmitigated disaster with this franchise over the last couple of years. Yeah. I mean, look, we knew how this series against the Nuggets would go. Um, it's funny. People keep harping on the Lakers. This is the closest 4-1 series ever and how the Lakers dominated most of the quarters. Ten years from now, we're not going to remember that. We're going to yeah. look at, oh, they lost 4-1 in the fourth quarter in those certain moments. Certain guys didn't show up. That's what we're going to look at. Michael Porter Jr., little little tap on Anthony Davis. He's rolling on the ground. That's what we're going to remember. That's all I see. In the biggest moments, Jamal Murray cooked you. Oh, big time. What an injury. Mental toughness. This is what we talked about with the Sixers and Knicks. This is what Magic is talking about. From, from, from the jump ball, Jamal Murray was locked in. There was no way he was not going to play and close that series out. Two times in that series, game winners are going home. That's crazy. And so for the Lakers... Magic is right. You're in that position because back in December or January, you're losing to teams like Chicago and San Antonio. So you mess around on the regular season, you're going to find out in April. Yeah. This is what happens. And so with the Lakers, the usual conversation, where's LeBron going to go? Oh, he's not LeBron. opting out. Look at he's the money. He's not opting out. He's Look staying in LA. Yeah. He's staying in LA. Are we going to get Trey Young? Or who? Look. You got to build a – you got to construct a team that makes sense, a basketball team. The Nuggets make sense. The Timberwolves make sense. The Thunder are a team. Yep. Like, miss me with trying to build with the biggest names. That worked out for the Suns, right? You can't and win so like that anymore. Like you just can't. 
you got to have guys, multiple guys that can do more than one thing. You got to have guys that are basketball players. Look at the Thunder and how they play, right? Look at Denver. Like, I mean, these rosters make sense. They're well constructed. They've built through the draft and they've added free agents that make sense and they've developed their guys. The Lakers, they mean one developmental guy they have right now. Austin Reeves, to me, I don't see him getting any much more bet. I don't, I don't, he is who he is at this point, right? Yeah. Hey, D Lo, he has his moments, but you can't fool me. I know who you are. You're right. right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, 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 it's, it's a really fascinating point you bring up because you mentioned, um, Phoenix and it's like we're making moves for some of these players we're trading we're trying to acquire we're signing into these max deals and we're going on the premise that they're going to be the player they were five years ago Bradley Beal's not that guy anymore Over. right um you know now there's talk Booker is quote dying to play you know for the I mean everything always comes out when you have a bad series you get bounced another disappointment they're they're reaching Phoenix to me you know they're they're always going to get their 48 to 55 wins, right? 50, 52. I don't think Kevin Durant's a winning player. I think Kevin Durant's a front runner. Kevin Durant is not the same player he once was. I don't care. Everyone in the league can score 25 to 35 points on any given night. We've seen guys you've never even heard of pump in 45 and 50 this season, right? Uh, where years ago, if a Dana Barrow scored 50, we were like, wow, my God, what yes. an effort. For yeah, it was huge, right? Point being... You know, Durant to me is such a friggin' front runner that he's probably looking around saying, all right, I mean, I'd have to check. Is he oh, yeah. signed through next season? I would have to double check that, but I, I right. believe I think so. Yeah. I, I'll pull it up, but you know, he's looking around saying, he's definitely looking. Him. He's definitely yeah. looking. Where, 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 where's the fit for me? Where's the fit for me? And quite frankly, I don't want Kevin Durant. Yeah. There's something about Kevin Durant that every time his team chokes, and or they lose or they get bounced. Well, you know, I'm looking at everyone else. Right. Yeah. But I'm not looking at myself. Right. Well, you know, the X, Y, and Z. And, and then you're blaming, you know, when you start to hear players start to blame the load management, the injuries. Hey, man, I don't want to hear any of that stuff anymore. <laughs> I, I don't because after a while, it gets to the point where you're like, enough is enough. Yeah. Like, go out, ball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to see what Durant has left, but... Yeah, that's yeah. another disappointing end to the season for the I Phoenix mean, Suns. I mean, the Suns, everything that they, everything that they're experiencing right now is exactly what they pay for. Right. I mean, how much did the Wizards? Bradley Bill is going to get paid fifty million. Crazy for what? For twelve points. And I'm still confused as to why the Wizards gave him that contract in the first place. Nothing about Bradley Bill screams to me at any point $50 million a year. Well, they've been known to – I mean, look what they – look, I love John Wall, but look at the money that they threw at John Wall, right? But kudos to them for actually trading hey. and finding a sucker hey. because it stuns, I tell you. You know, so these teams, I, I they act surprised when things don't work out or in, in a few years they're at the bottom of the league. Well, I can trace back the steps and see where your mistake was made. You gave this guy $50 million, Like, you, you're paying him $50 million. I don't know what you're expecting. And this team does not make sense. Like it's constructed. Booker, Bill, and KD. Who's your floor general? Well, Who's you would assume floor? it should be Devin Booker. Right? Yeah, it should be. But I, I I just don't see it with that nuke. I don't see it with that trio. It's just not, it's not gonna work. It is not going to work. You can't just say, okay, we have three of the best, we have three talented scorers. We're gonna alternate scoring. It's not gonna work especially when two of those guys are closer to washed up than they are in their prime. And that's you're talking about, you're talking about Durant and Beal. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so everything that they're experiencing right now is what they pay for. They went all out and this is what you get. And so I'm happy that these teams like the Thunder and the Nuggets and Timberwolves are actually winning and, and showing the Western conference and the rest of the league. This is how you build a winning team. This is how you do it. This is, this, this is it. Yeah, Durant, I just pulled it up. Um, under contract through 2025, 2026, free agent in 2026. <laughs> so, and remember, too, with the salary cap, how it jumped. Um, yeah. I mean, look, the guy's worth $300 million. He's a Hall of Famer. But, again, you know, you look at the track record. If I can't beat him, I got to join him. I, what What do you do if you're, like, you're stuck if you're a Phoenix? The only viable trade piece is Booker. Yeah. 
if you trade Booker, pretty much you're saying, I, I don't know what type of value you would expect in a Booker deal, but you're not going to get the value that you think you mm -hmm. deserve back. No. You're not. And so if you're Phoenix, you're pretty much stuck. Like, but this is the chance that you take that these teams continually make. This is why I feel like most front offices in the NBA are unserious. I just don't respect it. I don't respect most of these GMs. And, and I just don't because routinely you prove to me who you are. These choices that you make, you're giving Tobias Harris $180 million to be average. Give me half of that. I can give you four points a game. <laughs> like, please, please. Uh, that's and, funny. Come um, on. Like, let's be serious. So your Celtics will close out the heat tonight. Um, I'll I be like at that, that game. <laughs> yeah. I like that Clippers. Hey, listen, I mean, the lines right now, I think it's a 14, 15 and a half. Um, yeah. And then uh, Mavs and the Clippers. And then we've yeah. got, uh, obviously, Knicks and Sixers tomorrow, Bucks and Pacers. Um, if we can grab you for a couple moments on Friday, that'd be great because we'll kind of yeah. know uh, some of these potential for these series to get closed out. But, yeah, I'm going to look the wounds today. I'm going to um, I'm gonna take the L. I'll be salty for about another hour or so. Dude, the then... positive thing is, look, the Sixers have to win two more times. You guys have to win one more time. Yeah, but you know That's, this. Oh, I... <laughs> Fourth quarter, you start to get – you tighten up a little bit, man. Sure. You press, you press. And I just have this sneaky suspicion that in in beats both these that teams 30... get tight though. Both that's the thing. The Sixers yeah. and these teams, like these fan bases, like I just understand, like, who do we think we are? <laughs> we I know who I am. Like Listen, the that's Knicks, why I wasn't shocked. Like, the Knicks fans that were just terrorizing in Philly, yeah. like. Like what do you want? Help it a little bit. Like let's relax. And the Sixers fans, we gotta relax too. Like yeah. we know where we come from. We know yeah. who we are. We know yeah. what we've seen. Yeah. Like we aren't the Nuggets. Like yeah. no, no. We not like let's. We're not the Warriors when they were winning. Like, like we're the baby steps. This is yeah. just the first round. It's we still, still got, crazy when you think about first round. Great it's, series. It so feels far. like it's. It feels like it's deep in the playoffs. Yeah, that's and how so I feel. to me, it's like you know what. Somebody's going to fold in this series. I don't know who is going to be, but it's going to be a team that has folded in recent years, and both uh, these teams have, po have folded. So this is to me, this is this is a great series. It's a team. It's two cities who are passionate about their sports and their basketball, and two franchises who have proven to be unserious over the last years. So let's see. He is uh, Jonathan Marshall. I had John underscore Marshall three, and of course, sports reporter anchor at WMUR. Kind enough to join us on a Wednesday edition of. Back your play with you. Always appreciate a couple moments, pal. Thank you. I'm here for you. <laughs> That's what I need. Thank you. <laughs>